You're fantastic. <laughs> Majestic Thunderbolt. What the hell is this all about, I hear you ask? Well, look, it's a Godfrey Ho film and has Richard Harrison in it. Is that good enough for you? But amazingly, this isn't a ninja film. This is... This is something else. It's kind of pointless me being dressed as an army camouflaged ninja, but hey, you're in for a real treat. Ooh, yeah. Now, the last Godfrey Ho gem I reviewed was Ninja Avengers, which had Harrison starring in it, but he was missing his epic tash. Majestic Thunderbolt sees the return of the dead rat, so let's find out to see if it offers anything to making this film a good film. It's not going to be good, we all know that, but I'm sure it's going to be comedy gold nonetheless. So things begin with Richard Harrison playing a guy called Richard, how creative, well done Godders, and this guy called John meeting at an airport and getting into a car on their way to meet some other random guy. Now at the meetup they're suddenly ambushed by two random goons with axes and before you know it, John gets killed as does the other guy whose name we never find out and Harrison gets beaten up before... How dramatic. This clown isn't here though to save the day so he kicks Harrison and steals his briefcase which has lots of diamonds in it. Fantastic start, yeah? We're then introduced to completely boring characters who are clearly lifted from another film in typical Godfrey Ho fashion. His splicing of several films together never fails to get old. It's priceless. Within the space of about four minutes, we're introduced to these goons shooting at Target. This woman is attacked by men before she kills one of them, and then she gets killed herself. Let's go. Brilliant. And then onto another group of different guys, one of which I remember appearing in Ninja Dragon as Tiger Quark. Here he's called William. So, all in unlucky 13 minutes into the film. Ooh, interesting fact. I have a book out on paperback and download Kindle called Unlucky 13. Hint, hint. So anyway, um, yeah. So, an unlucky 13 minutes into the film and it's failed to make any fucking sense. But who am I to criticise a master filmmaker like Godfrey Ho? Now the main bad guy is this guy, who is obviously evil because in the shitcase universe, evil bad guys have tashes. He has a tash, he's evil. He's not happy at his henchmen killing the lady earlier, who happens to be Harrison's missus, so to show his annoyance of them, he pops on some music, watches some women dance in his swimming pool, and gives the guys a drink. Of poison! Ooh, what an evil son of a bitch! I'm sure Harrison will defeat him somehow despite him appearing by a stock footage. In Godfrey Ho we trust. Ah, I said this in the last video I made. These bloody tashes never stop on. <laughs> hey boss, looks like they've had an accident. Mm. Now the other main villain we saw earlier kicking Harrison for his briefcase of diamonds is called Philip. Yeah, he looks like a Philip. Anyway, Harrison wants to find out about him. Do you know this guy? Oh, Philip. Oh, Philip, yeah, very casual, like everyone in the neighbourhood knows about our Phil and our Dickie Harrison, you goon. So it's a funeral, I really don't know who it's for, I don't care, why should we? They mumble on about different characters. Franco, Mr. Chan, Jack Henry. Jack, Franco, who are these guys? Man, this is insane. Trying to watch this and make sense of it is like having a brain tumour for breakfast. Moving on, Harrison is fencing with his best friend, Steve. It's pointless, but then in a later scene, we see old Dicky rock up to fence Steve once more, but then out of nowhere, Steve's corpse appears, and this obviously pisses off our main man. Ooh yeah, don't mess around with a man with a tash, he'll show you who's boss. Now, if you're still wondering what's going on, don't worry, you're not losing your mind. None of this makes any sense, trust me. Cut to some private investigator who is told by Mr. Chan to take care of Franco. Who's Franco? Well, whatever. Mr. Chan, you have all the qualities of a priest, not a businessman. And that cut is nothing to do with me. Nah, no, it's just classic Godfrey Ho filmmaking. A badly dubbed meaningless line with an abrupt cut to the next meaningless scene. The acting on show from start to end is very inspiring stuff. Here's an example of this pool scene we've just cut to. You alone, or would you like a little company? Bug off, you creep. I don't need you right now. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Moving on, before we slip into some kind of coma, we get to enjoy the main villain enjoying a spot of golf. You just lost your bet. I never miss at this distance. God damn it. It's always the same. You always just miss getting it in. <laughs> Don't say that to me, you goddamn stupid bitch. Ooh, evil son of a bitch. Then we cut to a random guy at the dentist's enjoying his teeth being looked at. Jesus Christ. Seriously, what the hell am I even watching here? Majestic Thunderbolt, a dynamic, action-packed thriller. Oh yeah, I forgot. And you know what's funny? If you watch the trailer for the film, they probably thought the audience were really stupid because they announced the title of the film every 10 seconds, just in case you forget. Majestic Thunderbolt. 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 Don't miss it. Coming soon to this theater. But this scene improves greatly because good old Richard Harrison turns out from nowhere demanding the whereabouts of Philip. Where's Philip Cole? Tell me! He, he, he's in his door. Please! And then he kills him. Okay, so he might not be dressed as a ridiculous looking ninja in this film, but having him dress as a dentist more than makes up for it. Now here's my top five random bullshit moments. Number one. Now, as with all Godfrey Ho's masterpieces, all the characters share the same ridiculously stock names, such as... Hey, Mimi, this is Richard. Kim. Jean! Shut up. In this Mr. Lily. William. Franco. Henry. Tell me, John, how are things going here? Alan. Number two, the amount of times different people refer to the diamonds as ice is mental. You want I should send the ice? What's Actually, I think it's said once. See, this film's just corrupted my brain. Number three, the villains always have the greatest laughs, which is always the same guy doing the dubbed voice in these shitty movies. <laughs> it's incredibly infectious. <laughs> See? Oh, it's too hot to be dressed as a fucking ninja. I'm sweating like a whore in a church. <sighs> Number four, I have no idea who this is listening to the horse racing while on the toilet, but just check it out. Go for it! That's it! Behind number one. They're neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> Must have had a super strong curry. Number five, the amount of times the main bad guy pushes his shades up is a constant thing he does. If he's not laughing over the top, then he's doing this. You goon! Cut to another bad guy getting wiped out in his bathroom by Alan. Who's Alan? He's someone's brother, you know, someone from earlier in the film that we don't remember because we've probably all got brain tumours by now. But it's irrelevant anyway. That Alan Bang is a tricky bastard. His name's Rattlesnake. He's known as the best in the trade. Right, here's a drinking game you can play when watching this film or even my review. Whenever you're confused, which should be all of the fucking time basically, take a drink. Maybe write your will out beforehand because seriously, you will not make it out of this one alive. I'll just take a minute just to say if you'd like to support Shitcase Cinema as a channel, you can always buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. It's amazing, isn't it? Or you could always go onto Amazon and purchase one of my books on Kindle download or paperback. Please. <laughs> So it's all very confusing stuff. Harrison is barely in it, but apparently he's searching for his diamonds that were taken at the beginning by Philip, who sits around painting patterns on naked women for some reason, but I can't show you that because YouTube doesn't like boobies. God damn it. Bossman kills his girlfriend in a fish tank, and that goldfish right there is doing the best acting of anyone in this movie. William is caught and blown up in a car, and then we're back with Harrison, who is now on roller skates and attacking another random guy who is clearly just been out shopping for food. Once again, that's not my editing, that is Godfrey Ho wizardry. Look at him skate away like a boss. Now, I don't know what's going on here or who is involved, but I sure love the wooden dialogue. Can't you see I'm fixing it? I'll move it when I can. Huh? Damn you! Move it off the bloody road! And then there's a shootout before this happens. What are you doing? What's going on? 
So what's your game? Who are you really? Really, I'm a Korean detective. I'm in Hong Kong to investigate the diamond smuggling into my country. <sighs> I am speechless. I mean, I don't know who's who or what's happening, so let's just jump straight to the end because I'm losing the will to live here. Um, but before the ending arrives, there's this hilarious sex scene, which I can't show, between Philip and this woman, and then he kills her, drinks her blood for some bizarre reason, and again, it just makes no sense, and then we're on to the big finale. But wait, what about that private investigator? Well, he got caught, had a fight and lost, but he still got paid despite failing to do his job. What a legend. And with a face like that, he should be on t-shirts all over the world. I'd wear one. What a stud. Anyway, on to the main event. Richard versus Philip. Uh, let's get So after a laughable training and weapons loading montage, the fight begins down at the beach with chickens. Oh yeah, every fight needs to have some kind of spectators to cheer on the fighters. And holy shit, he just shot a chicken and oh no, he's joining in as well. His fucking KFC employees on a rampage. What is happening? So after their bullets run out, gee, I guess you shouldn't have just wasted them on chickens. It's a knife fight. So we at least get some kind of Harrison ninja related nonsense. And to make it more ninja-like, he even throws a ninja star too. He totally misses like a gimp, but look at him getting stuck in. Philip really shouldn't have stolen his diamonds. You know, I don't even think Harrison is aware that his lady was killed at the beginning. He's not said a bloody word since the very start. So our main man wins, surprise, surprise, and then he jumps in a boat and pushes it out to sea. The end. I mean, just wow, my brain hurts. Oh, and if you wanted to know what happened to the evil boss, who I believe was Franco, he shot himself in the head when Alan, you know, Alan, you remember? No? Well, it doesn't matter. Had him at gunpoint, but he survives long enough for this amusing moment. You jumped the gun a bit there. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't have any bullets left. <laughs> I really think I'm doing the Lord's work here. It's almost like it's my calling to review dirge like this. Now, would I recommend it? Probably about as much as ramming a pencil up my nose and into my frontal cortex. This is quite possibly the most inept and incoherent Godfrey Ho film ever, but the thing is, I've probably said that about all of his films that I reviewed over the years. So I'm giving Majestic Thunderbolt a not so majestic one out of 10. The amount is reasonable. <laughs> Majestic Thunderbolt.